morning and welcome to Holy Spirit. Please stand. You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nation that made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brother and sister, let us call to mind our sins as we enter into these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Hear our prayers, O Lord, so that what we was promised by the sanctifying power of your word may everywhere be accomplished through the working of the gospel and that all your adopted children may obtain what the testimony of truth has foretold through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One night while Paul was in Corinth, the Lord said to him in a vision, Do not be afraid. Go on speaking and do not be silent, for I am with you. No one will attack and harm you, for I have many people in this city. He settled there for a year and a half and taught the word of God among them. But when Gal Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews rose up together against Paul and brought him to the tribunal, saying, This man is inducing people to worship God contrary to the law. When Paul was about to reply, Gallio spoke to the Jews, If it were a matter of some crime or malicious fraud, I should with reason hear the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a question of arguments over doctrine and titles and your own law, see to it yourself. I do not wish to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them away from the tribunal. They all seized Sosthenes, the synagogue official, and beat him in full view of the tribunal. But none of this was of concern to Gallio. Paul remained for quite some time, and after saying farewell to the brothers, he sailed for Syria, together with Priscilla and Aquila. At Sancre, he had shaved his head because he had taken a vow. The word of the Lord. God is king of all the earth. All you peoples, clap your hands. Shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God is King of all the earth. He brings people under us, nations under our feet. He chooses for us our inheritance, the glory of Jacob, whom he loves. God is king of all the earth. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy. The Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our king, sing praise. God is king of all the earth.
Alleluia, alleluia. Christ said to suffer and to rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she's in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy that a child has been born into the world. So you also are now in anguish. But I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice. And no one will take your joy away from you. On that day, you will not question me about anything. Amen. Amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. The Gospel of the Lord. Continuing the journey with Paul through the Acts of the Apostles, we hear how he has, at least at the beginning, something that happened very similarly to Jesus. It's brought to the tribunal. They wanted to accuse him based to Jewish law. And they go to Gallio because he has the power to uh, punish Paul severely. But again, they receive, well, it's your law, your Jewish matter. I don't care. And then you see the crowd, especially this Jewish crowd, that come to a point of kind of madness. You know, in order to force a reaction from Gallio, the tribunal, he, they take the synagogue official and beat him in front of him. Like, got to some obstination of wanting what they seek to bend the law, bend other people's will, so that they can obtain what they want. And they do such a barbarous act in front of him. But nothing happens because God has promised to Paul, don't be afraid. No one will attack you and harm you, for I have many people in this city. To do not be afraid that Jesus was repeating, stays constant, and the protection that God provides for those who live the gospel, for those who are his children, still holds. Even in the midst of so much violence or rage, or people don't understand it. So I think on one side, seeing uh, this crowd wanting to bend destiny of other people, wanting to force other in doing what they want, and how to what kind of extreme it can go, I think can teach us in a different way how we need to learn to let go at some point. How much are we willing to continue to have our own way? What kind of price are we willing to pay in order so that people do what I want, so that things change according to my taste? Am I willing to go, yeah, maybe I'm too polite to beat somebody up. But even like as an image, how far am I willing to go to obtain my own things? And I think on the other side, realizing that God protects us always. I mean, it's been something of the promise that he made since the beginning when he chose the people of Israel. Even when they were in slavery. Even when they put, were put in exile. Still, he was protecting them. Still was caring for them. And so in Jesus, coming and doing everything for, for us, 
to the point of death, he keeps protecting us. And in this time of resurrection, even 2,000 years later, God keeps protecting us. So whether today we need to be challenged of letting go something or maybe sit honestly in front of the Lord and ask ourselves, how far am I willing to carry this thing that I think it's important, this thing that it's my own will, this thing that maybe I didn't even ask God if he wants it to happen, on the other side, if we find ourselves maybe with threats of any kind, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be life threats, although um, maybe we're more aware of life threats with the virus, but how much can I go back to that promise and trust in the Lord that he's going to take care of me, that he's going to protect me, that I don't need to be afraid. Trusting the Lord knows our grief and anguish, we present our needs to him. That the Lord may heal the wounds of his church and bring justice and healing to our members. Let us pray to the Lord. That the peace of Christ may overpower nations in conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. That God may relieve the suffering of all who struggle with disease or ill health. Let us pray to the Lord. That Christ may bring consolation to those in our community who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who have died may experience eternal life with Christ in the glory of resurrection. Especially today, we lift up Barbara Seifers for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. For our own special intentions, we want to mention in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. God of wonder and might, we bring these prayers before you. Hear and answer them, we ask, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. I 
Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but obtain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like to do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, into bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, while condemned into the light of your face. Mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For communion, there are three lines. I'm going to move through all three of those. And the important thing is to, there's a box six feet apart from where I will stand. And as I present to the body of Christ, you say amen with your mask still on. You say amen. Remove your mask. Come as close as needed to receive the Eucharist so I can place it in your hand. And then you move aside when there are axes on the floor. You can consume it there and mask again. Your hands, you can cup them, you can have them flat, it's in, as much as possible. If you keep them still, it's very easy for me to place the Eucharist without touching you. And if I do touch you, I'll have plenty of hand sanitizer to clean my hands. So, get in the amen box, say amen with your mask on, remove the mask and come close. If you have even masks like this one, I think it's pretty easy if you just take one ear off. It still stays hanging. 
and then you, after you consume the Eucharist, you put it back on. I'm going to start from the section B here. Body of Christ. I think I didn't announce we're going to go section by section, don't cross to the pews, okay? Going to start with section C first.
Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Alleluia. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Um, so it's now that you're asked to be dismissed so that we can clear the pew for the next Mass. If you can please just keep in mind to be six feet apart. It would be easy if 